I would wet, uh, wetten some, is that a word? Wetten? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, channel about board games and board gamey thing. We have a special, special edition today. A lot of you have been asking me to do a video about painting. Wanted to do that, but I wanted to do it a bit different because there's a lot kind of here to unpack for me personally, and it took a little bit of time for me to figure out exactly how I wanted to do this. So this video isn't going to be me painting. So if that's what you're looking for, not what this is going to be. Also, if if you are uncomfortable with men <laughs> being vulnerable on camera, probably not the video for you because one of the things I wanted to talk about here is why I paint. I think the, the reason why it took me so long to get to this was because it's a pretty personal topic for me that I think we need to digest a bit before we get into, you know, paint specific topics. And the reason why I wanted to talk about it because I think it's important to have that information to understand why painting means so much to me and why I've kind of dove into it as, as heavily as I can. If you're interested in hearing a bit of my history and story and, you know, personal life, here we go. I had thought about painting for a long time. I never really got into it, hesitated a ton, which I think a lot of people do. You spend a lot of money on miniatures and games, and if you're not feeling adequate enough to paint, you don't want to ruin your miniatures. So that makes a ton of sense. Jamie's brother, Zach, was always super supportive in trying to push me in the right direction. I owe a lot to him in, in, in getting into this because he painted heavily, but it really wasn't until we met the guys over at Table Knots that pushed me really into it. So they sent us a really lovely package. In that were, were some contrast paints sent from Doolin. Then I had the paint and I was like, okay, it's probably time that I jump into this. Before we get there, I want to chat about, again, why I paint. About six years ago now, I think it was the year before Jamie and I got married. We just moved back down to Nova Scotia and I just started getting very, very ill. I remember we were in Fredericton and I started to feel very, very off, very tired, very sick, just couldn't seem to be myself. And then we moved to, to Bridgewater at the time, Nova Scotia, and I got sick. Without going into too much detail, uh, it was about eight months or so where we didn't really know what was going on. I met with multiple specialists, many doctors, many terrible, terrible nights, really dark period, I think, in my life. And it's tough for me to talk about because I'm still dealing with the after effects of whatever that was. So to give you, I guess, some idea, whatever this thing was, was viral. It worked its way through it through my body, ended up in my brain, and I'm now dealing with neurological effects of that. I met with a neurologist when this was all happening. I met with an ENT. Uh, I continue to meet with specialists to this day. I still don't know essentially what happened. Had a neurologist say definitely something has impacted your system, but we might never know what it is. Luckily, no severe long-term effects. It was something I dealt with and continued to deal with. So what I mean by all of this is the after effects of all of that. It's a hard thing to describe. I've tried to eloquently explain to Jamie how it's impacted me. Essentially, think about it in terms of like when you're in a super stressful situation and your hands get sweaty, it's like a flight response. My body tends to go through these phases of what I have de deemed flare ups now where my anxiety is incredibly high, sweaty palms, I can't sleep. I tend to lose focus very quickly now. A lot of stuff that I have to deal with from the after effects of this. Long way of me saying, painting has provided me with a way to calm myself down, especially when I'm going through, again, what I have deemed these flare ups. I've been medicated. I've been through therapy, uh, psychology, all of these things, chiropractic to try to see if it can help. A lot of the times I just can't sleep. And with that comes a myriad of issues. Painting has become my therapy. And it's the only thing that I've been able to identify that I can have a singular focus on the thing I'm doing. It's tough for me because even when I'm playing a game, if I'm playing a game with new people, I feel the need to tell them that they might notice I am looking in a hundred different directions or I'm not necessarily paying attention to what they're saying during a teach, all of these other things. And that's not because I'm not interested or I'm a like, it's just, I cannot focus singularly on certain things. I'm getting better at it, but it's a product of all of this. Again, when I paint, it's one of the only things that allows me just to just sit down 
have some music on or I've been listening a lot to a lot of critical role that allows me to calm down, reduces my anxiety, and just lets me chill out essentially. You'll probably notice in videos. Moving forward, you're probably gonna notice it more now because I'm mentioning it to you, but I touch my face a lot, I chew on my tongue, play with my my beard. I'm I'm very fidgety. Again, I'm relatively normal and fine. It's just little things I deal with. That's kind of why I got into painting. I didn't know that before I started painting. It I guess initially I did it because I thought the miniatures looked cool and I was like, hey, I want to do that. I'm not an overly artistic person either, which kind of was adding to the hesitancy to do this. But once I started painting and I identified that I could sit down and the first time I painted, I was sitting down and I didn't really know what I was doing. I had some tidbits of information from Zach and Doolin and videos and I just was like, all right, I'm just going to try this and see what happens. It was super calming. I was hooked immediately because I enjoyed what I was doing. It gave life to the miniatures that I was painting and it helped me personally. And the more and more I've painted, the more and more I've realized that this has become a thing that I need. I need to be able to do this. And Jamie's been super supportive. There's times where, you know, I have to say to Jamie, like, I, today is like just a, I need to go downstairs and be on my own and paint day or afternoon or evening. And she's super supportive about that. And, and she's at, started painting as well. And so it's another thing that we can enjoy together in an adjacent board game hobby, I guess. I guess getting all that out of the way, I started with Scythe. Scythe was the first thing that I painted. Looking back, they weren't the best. Now, I want to caveat that with for people that are looking to get into this. They don't look that bad. A poorly painted miniature, in my opinion, is still going to look better, again, in my opinion, than a gray miniature on the table. Yes, if you snap a photo and you see photos online, you can nitpick miniatures until the end of time. You have to make a decision of what this is going to mean to you. For me, when I first started, it was like, let's get some paint on these things. They'll look good on the table. I'm not gonna worry about if someone picks that up and starts looking at it through detail and be like, oh, there's a miss. Like, it doesn't matter. When you're looking at it from a distance, like on playing Scythe, if that's on the table, people are gonna see those colors and it's gonna just increase the aesthetic of the game. And I think overall improve everyone's kind of, you know, experience with the game. I have one here. Jamie's gonna do some sweet B-roll so that you can see it. This was my favorite, I think, from my original side. And that's the Rust Viet mechs, which are the red, the red mechs with the sword-esque hands. So I painted these, again, primarily with metallic army painter that's these here so the metallic army painters actually have the black cap conversely the non-metallics have a white cap what i learned pretty quickly is you can put too much paint on and i just didn't really have a lot of experience to go on so i didn't know what really to do but it didn't matter because they actually turned out super well in comparison to the miniatures i've done recently it they they pale in comparison but again if you're looking at this on the table unless you're an experienced painter and you're going to grab this and look at it and look at it, at it under a microscope. Yeah, you're going to pick out stuff. I mean, to Jamie or other people that we might invite over to play Scythe, they're going to see that stuff and be like, that's really freaking cool. Another thing that I did differently that I wish I might go back and, and change, I painted the bases. So the bases here, this was the, the red color of Scythe, this mech originally. I painted the entire base black. But what I've actually started to do since with bases is actually paint the tops black and just the rim around it, the player color. I just think it looks better. It's easier to use black, I think, on the top when you're getting around the miniature's feet and stuff. I've just improved that process since. Scythe was the first thing I painted. When I look at them now, like, you know, I'm happy with it given it was my first attempt. You improve very quickly. I then immediately painted another version of Scythe, an entire version of Scythe with the base game, the Invaders from Afar expansion as well as Rise of Fenris for a friend and those ones turned out incredible. Now that's partly due to the fact that I just finished painting Scythe. I knew what to do. I knew the color scheme that I enjoyed and I could just replicate basically everything I had already done. So it made it a bit, e bit easier, but those really propelled me to what I would state is like a pretty decent painter at this point. I'm never going to be the person that can showcase things or, you know, do commissions or, or whatever. Maybe if someone commissioned for like, you know, a play level type miniature, I could likely do that. But I'm pretty content with where I'm at right now in terms of my skill set. 
and I keep kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. So I'll get into the other miniature stuff in a second. I just wanted to briefly talk about like what I use in case you are looking to get into it because you don't need to dive in super deep. I've collected most of this stuff over the last, I don't even know how long I've been painting, four or five months, six months, as it's come up. And as I determined that this was a thing that I'm going to do all the time, then I was like, okay, I can invest some money in this because it's bringing me hours and hours and hours of therapy, enjoyment, and whatever you want to call it. Primarily what I'm using for paints, I use a ton of contrasts. So these are Citadel color contrasts. Two things about these. One, they're super forgiving. They're much more liquidy than the army painters that they'll get into the recesses. They'll do that contrast for you where there's dark recesses and lighter areas. It doesn't require you to do as much highlighting. And again, getting into this whole realm of like, how deep do you want to go? Do you want to add highlights? Do you want to do these things? You don't have to with contrasts. And they go on super quick. You can paint a miniature in 15 to 20 minutes if you really want to. I would recommend starting with contrast paints. People are probably going to disagree. And that's fine. This is just my personal opinion. Contrast paints, I think, are the way to start. And keep in mind, painting is not cheap. Be mindful of that. If you're interested in trying it, maybe get a couple colors of, you know, whatever you need for a specific game that you're looking to paint. See if you enjoy it and then and then go from there. The one thing with contrast, though, that are negative is it's difficult to blend colors, essentially, because they're so thin that you can't really blend and, and color mix the same way you can with the more traditional acrylics. Contrast paints, love them. Those were the ones that Duel had sent to me. He'd sent me a blue, yellow, red, green. You're, you're basically basic primary colors and that kind of set me off on my journey and what I would say is as you get more and more into this and more and more adventurous then you'll uncover like oh I need a different color in the spectrum because I want to do this and that and the other thing and now I have I think I almost have the entire contrast line when I paint metallics I'm only using Army Painter. I've never tried the Citadel. The only thing is when you're using metallics, use a poopier brush. They're just not great on, on brushes. So I have a couple of brushes that I only use for metallics. I don't use a ton of traditional acrylic Army Paint. Again, I, I tend to go towards the Citadel Contrast. I have been doing them more recently because I've started doing OSL effects. OSL is object source lighting. As an example, if a miniature is holding a lantern, you would paint it as if that lantern was actually providing light to the miniature and that includes a bunch of shading and stuff so i'll show you an example here so this is a men here from tainted grail and i this is my first attempt so don't judge me i don't airbrush so i should mention that as well i do not airbrush osl effects is like an airbrush technique you can do it the way i have in my opinion it's likely more difficult and you're not going to get quite as nice of an effect i attempted this with the men here from tainted grail and you'll see He's got some candles down here and then candles here, here, and he's holding one as well. So basically with an OSL effect, your light source would be lighter and then your spectrum of colors will darken. Basically what I do is you can do it any way you want. You can do it with blues, you can do it with reds, whatever works. But my spectrum is normally white, yellow, orange, and then a darker reddish orange color. Really the only way to achieve that is by using acrylics and blending those colors to make them kind of the spectrum make sense. Again, something I've just started doing. I'm pretty happy with the result of what I've been able to do given I have no experience in it, but it's a really cool effect if you're feeling adventurous. So other than that, I don't use a ton of stuff uh, in terms of the normal acrylic paints. If you are using those, you will need a wet palette. I don't have mine here with me, but when I first started, I just had a plastic container that we bought from Walmart. I would dampen some paper towel and then put a piece of parchment paper over top. And that is used to keep the paint inside wet so that you, you're not wasting paint. That was like my DIY wet palette. You put the paint on top of the parchment paper and then you can mix and, and close it up and use it at the future date. I've recently upgraded to an actual wet palette. Once you've determined that this is something you want to do, go get a wet palette. I think I waited too long and I was super annoyed at the DIY one I was using and I probably waited a month or two too long to get an actual wet palette and I wish I'd just done it. On top of that, from the paints, the contrast paints, the metallics, and the normal acrylics. The only other thing I tend to use right now is a Nuln oil or shade, a wash. We do have Army Painter washes, but in my opinion, Nuln oil is the only one I'll use at this point. And it just accentuates things on the miniature, brings things out. They work better on highly detailed miniatures. Like this is the donkey. Yes, Leanne, you're welcome. From Tainted Grail with 
a ton of recesses and way more detail than on, on a lot of other miniatures. So it really brings out stuff on that type of stuff. Two more things I'll mention in terms of my actual like paint process are brushes. Go cheap. You're going to ruin them. I've ruined a ton of brushes. We have, I think we have like 30 brushes over there. I've recently purchased an expensive brush with actual like horsehair bristles. I rarely use it. I use it only with contrast paints and on really, really fine detailed stuff. There's other things you can get as well. Jamie's given me a couple like makeup things that I've used for rust effects. I think the technical term is texture tools. The only other thing I think I use that I haven't mentioned is a stand. Zach actually brought me a ton of these. I think they're like old like K cups. I use these as stands. Uh, they have a bit of sticky tack on top. You can get actual Citadel stands, I think, and I'm sure they're way better, but right now I'm pretty comfortable using these K cups. I got a ton of them, so I can paint one miniature, set it aside, let it dry, grab another one, grab another K cup and, and keep going. So, so I forgot to talk about primer. There's a contrast specific primer that I use called Wraithbone from Citadel. So it's a white primer, and I've also used gray sear, which is a darker gray primer as well. The end result is just, if you're using gray sear, the colors are gonna be a bit darker. I prefer Wraithbone at this point. I've had some misfortune with gray sear, and I don't know if it's a me problem, if it was a can problem or a miniature problem, I'm not sure. In terms of your priming techniques, I use a strip of cardboard with duct tape on it, and I stick all the miniatures in a line on the duct tape and then spray them. You can get stuff to help you prime. It's probably the most most annoying part of the whole process. I bulk prime, so I'll take a bunch of miniatures out to the garage or outside and prime all of them at once because I hate priming and I don't want to think about it. I just do it, get it over with, and then all of the miniatures that I've primed have a place that they sit next to my painting station and I can just pull out what I want to paint. Yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of my process. I'm probably forgetting stuff. I know it's a lot of information. Obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I am more than happy to chat about it. Better yet, it's hard to have conversations in YouTube comments. If you're not in the Discord, come to our Discord. We have incredible, incredible painters in there. Incredible. And they've been super helpful in getting me going. Kenny's a, an amazing painter. Jusil? I can't remember his Discord name. Anyway, there's a lot of awesome painters in there that have a ton of advice and are super helpful. We have an entire channel dedicated to hobbies and painting and showing off your photos and stuff. So if you have questions, it's the best way. Come ask them, honestly. Feel free to, if you're not comfortable with Discord, don't, don't know how it works, feel free to drop some comments and I'll try to get to them. But best way is to come chat in Discord. All right, so I'm going to so, show you quickly some of the miniatures that I've I've done that I like the most and kind of like <laughs> what in what part of my painting experience I was at with them. So I've already showed you the Scythe Mini. I really love mechs, so I wanted to do a good job on these. This one, I gave it a bit of a grease effect, just a bronze effect on the sword arms, as you can see. That was the first miniature, first game I ever painted. Uh, next up, I think I did Merchant's Cove. The one I like most is actually the blacksmith. So the blacksmith here was my first attempt at giving it any sort of like light effect. So he's got a, what looks like a horseshoe that he's banging on his anvil. And I gave it a little bit of melted metal look on the end of the horseshoe. But again, this was super early on. I'm actually very, very happy with how this one turned out, given how new I was to the uh, painting hobby i'm i i love this miniature it means a lot to me because it was the first time i finished one and i was like i was like yeah i can do this from there i can't remember what i did next i've done there's this isn't all i've done i mean i there's a ton of stuff i've done but i just wanted to kind of highlight some stuff so a big game that i've painted and i paint almost all of it i just realized i have two miniatures left that i haven't done and that's cthulhu death may die and this is the cthulhu figure that i had done this was the first time i ever attempted blending contrasts together on his wings you will see that there's shades of purple pink and then a basically gray white ish it's called skeleton horde i did it on the tentacles as well as on the wings and really i just wanted to try it i basically was like i don't care enough i'm gonna see how this worked out or works out and i'm actually super happy with it i don't love the color scheme that i use but i was limited by what paints i had that goes back to what i was mentioning like when you get into this more and more having a spectrum of paint is going to matter in instances like this i just didn't have the right type of paints to make that gradual spectrum of color work as well as I would have liked to. It was very, very difficult to paint this Cthulhu just with all of the ridges and all the little like barnacles or whatever you want to call it on his back. Very, very happy with the way he turned out. From there, I went into Lords of Hellas 
This might be the miniature I'm most proud of. I don't know why, because it was a somewhat simple paint job, but the way it turned out to me is just, I just love it. It's Athena. So I painted Athena with a black contrast base. After I had done that, I was like, I kind of just like how it is. And then I gave her some blue metallic highlights. You can see it on her shield, in her visor, on her face, and some recesses of her armor. And then from there, I was like, I want to give it a rust effect. So in Lords of Hellas, this represents a statue. And so I wanted to bring that out in the paint. And so I took one of those texture tools, basically a Jamie's makeup brush, used some bronze and just started dabbing it on the miniature to give it that rust effect. And it just, in my opinion, it turned out incredibly well. It's likely one of my favorite paints. Even though I don't think it's my best paint, I think it's one of my favorites by far. From there, I went into Tainted Grail. I talked about the OSL, but I'll talk about the men here. I didn't paint the men here. So this is black primer, traditional black primer, not the contrast-based primer. From there, I dry brushed this entire miniature. Dry brushing is basically you're dabbing some paint on your brush and then you're wiping the majority of it off on paper towel and then just dry brushing it. It takes a lot longer. It was my first attempt at fully dry brushing a miniature and I really like the way it turned out. So it's black primer, but I used a, I can't remember the paint type I used, but it's uh, army painter and it's like this, I don't wanna say moldy green, but like think of like Statue of Liberty, like aged that blue color. I used that as well and dry brushed the entirety of it and then used some white highlights to highlight some of the face features or the where light would typically hit on this miniature and then use the OSL effects for the light sources. So you'll see it on the back and in the light sources where the candles are, you'll see oranges and yellows and whites and reds. Before that, I did just all of the other miniatures and these were all done with contrasts. I'm actually, it's funny, we have a joke in the Discord about the this donkey in particular, but it's actually one of my best paints. I absolutely love this donkey. I just think I was able to capture all of the color scheme that I wanted to, and they highlighted perfectly, and I'm super proud of it. The other one that I love, this, I can't remember his name, but it's basically a butcher character from Tainted Grail. One thing I'll mention is if you have animals, <laughs> Good luck, get hair in it constantly. The the thing I'm pr uh, most proud about on this miniature is I, I fully painted this. Um, so he's actually stepping on a pig head. And so I added some blood to his cleaver, which I thought was really cool effect. And then I was looking at it and I was like, what else can I do? So I added some to the, the, the cleaver and he's got a little hook, added some blood and I saw the pig head. And so I painted the pig head uh, in the back bloody and then added this pooling blood effect on the base and I just that was a moment I think where I was kind of like yeah like I'm comfortable enough to kind of push things a bit and it's super like it's a tiny addition and doesn't mean much but in the grand scheme of things like I just thought it was like me being a little bit more creative than I normally are again I've mentioned I'm not an overly creative person so I don't necessarily think that way I struggle with color scheme and all of these things which is weird because in my real job I do a lot of UX stuff and in that space I'm fine but for some reason when I'm painting I'm like I don't know what goes with what but anyway really really proud of this one currently painting vast uh, mysterious manor and haunted hallways expansion and then I'll be painting in adjacency vast crystal caverns as well this one I thought was pretty cool this is the one of the spiders uh, again I I don't we haven't played the game I don't know the characters names I don't even know what the spider functions as but I really enjoyed painting this I gave it a little bit of texture purple through pinks to reds and really proved to myself that I knew what I was doing in terms of like color blending and it just turned out really well I had a ton of fun with it creepy little pink eyeballs and this is currently where I'm at I'm painting the uh the vast miniatures and having a ton of fun with it that's pretty much it for my painting adventure probably a bit more than <laughs> needed to be said but I'm pretty passionate about it I will mention too it's another thing where I don't do the editing I don't do a lot of the heavy heavy work that you know Jamie puts into this channel I mean she she carries it I always wanted to try and do more and I think this is a way that I can showcase games better that I can provide to the channel by painting miniatures and showing some of these games in the full way that they can be displayed that's what I can provide and so part of me painting is being able to give back to Jamie and improving her experience playing a game improving the experience that other people come and play games with us see and the publishers and 
all of these people that have put their confidence in us to display their games as well as we can. It's the least I can do. That's part of the puzzle too. But anyway, that's it for me. Obviously, like I said, if you have questions about painting, hop in the Discord. It's the best place to be in touch with me and other painters. Do research online. Ask me questions in, in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. Appreciate being given the ability to kind of speak a little bit about, you know, my personal history and stuff. So if you want to buy games that have miniatures or paint or paint products, you can do that at your friendly local gaming store. And for us here in Halifax, that is the Boardroom Game Cafe. Jamie's giving me coaching <laughs> advice in the background. If you like what you see, please subscribe, and we hope to see you again soon. Later days. Bye. <laughs> what else should I mention? Um, hmm, priming, paint, priming. I feel like I'm missing something. What am I forgetting? Hmm. I'll clap so you know when I'm coming back in.